man who needs no introduction. The Black Information Network is committed to bringing you up-to-the-date news stories that are relevant, informative, and inspiring. And while news stories are always being updated and others are breaking, we understand that you need to be in the know all week long. Welcome to your midweek memo on the Black Information Network daily podcast with me, your host, Ramses Ja. You know, it is a strange and ever-changing world in which we live. And I think that today's stories reflect one or both of those truths. This first one certainly does. So this comes from the Black Information Network. Meta, the parent company of Facebook, Instagram, and Threads, has recently started limiting political and social content on these massive platforms. The company defines political content as likely to mention governments, elections, or social topics that affect a group of people and or society at large, per Mashable. Suggested posts will be automatically limited for Explore, Reels, Feed Recommendations, and Suggested Users, but it won't affect accounts users already follow, the brand stated. That also means that users will have to adjust their settings if they wish to see that content pop up on their feeds again. Indeed, posts from the Black Information Network fall under this category, so to provide you some tips on how you can keep seeing this content, uh, what you'll do is you'll click on your profile in the bottom right corner, and click on your settings, the three bar symbol in the top right corner, scroll down to tap content preferences, and then tap political content and select don't limit political content from people you don't follow. Experts suspect it's part of Meta's strategy of moving away from news related and political content while tackling rampant misinformation. Past elections saw misinformation fueled by social media campaigns wreaking havoc on American democracy. The advent of AI-generated co content has also complicated efforts to combat such problems. So, indeed, a new world and a strange world. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, if, if you can't play nice, I'm taking my ball and going home. And truth told, I am not even mad at it. Of course, I make political content, but... I long to live in a world where I can make content about things that I'm passionate about. You know, I'm passionate about music. That's my background. I wish I didn't have to make political content, but it feels necessary. Um, so with Meta saying, listen, if you guys can't get your information right with this AI stuff and, you know, we're the platform that is causing this divide in the country. So we're going to limit this type of content. So as to delimit the ever deepening divide, I say, I mean, if it's executed the way that I think that it should be executed, I say, you know, that's fine by me. So um, I'm obviously going to still keep fighting this fight. The Black Information Network is still going to keep fighting this fight. And if you wish to uh, walk with us on this path, um, again, there are instructions here where you can make sure that our content still makes its way to you. Um, if you're already following the Black Information Network or me or Civic Cipher or Q Ward, then um, you got nothing to worry about, but uh, looks like a change is coming. Moving on, obviously the big story in the news is um, Diddy's two houses getting raided, um, you know, people trying to track his jet and pacing back and forth uh, at the airport in Miami. And, you know, all of the rumors surrounding that situation. So um, I don't think that I'll be the first person to give you <laughs> this, this news, but um, I, I feel it's important to share at least Diddy's statement since you already know likely that all of this has happened. So in case you missed it, Diddy released a statement through his lawyer saying, quote, yesterday there was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs's residences, there is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. This unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment 
of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name, unquote. So, um, uh, there's there's a lot here, you know, the the media presence and all that stuff. I, you know, this that's just how the media works, as we all know. And of course, his neighbors were, you know, trying to go viral by saying Diddy had all kinds of stuff going on there, and then that, of course, uh, ended up not being true. So, you know, everyone's having their field day, getting their their moment. But one thing that I will say is that. Typically, when the feds are involved, it's serious. Ironically, I learned from Biggie Smalls, a bad boy artist, <laughs> uh, in one of his songs, uh, he's, he says, only the feds I fear. And uh, there's a good reason for that, because if the feds are coming for you, they, they are likely going to be successful. And so um, we're just going to have to see how it plays out. But at present, that is Diddy's statement. And, um, you know, we'll see why they needed to have such an aggressive show of force. Um, I don't imagine this happens based off of nothing. But, you know, so far, I have nothing else to report. This is your midweek memo on the Black Information Network Daily Podcast with me, your host, Ramses Ja. All right. The other big story in the news uh, so far this week from CNN, six people are presumed dead after a major bridge collapsed overnight Tuesday. According to the Coast Guard, the Francis Scott Key Bridge came down around 1130 a.m. Eastern time after a car after a cargo ship collided with it in maryland the coast guard said it has ended its active search and rescue op operation for the missing construction workers who were on the bridge when it collapsed more than 18 hours after the collapse of the baltimore bridge maryland governor wes morris said it was a heartbreaking conclusion after the coast guard ended the search and rescue operation for the six people who were on the bridge when it collapsed it's a quote really heartbreaking conclusion to a challenging day unquote uh goes on to say we put every single asset possible air land and sea to finding missing people uh, this he told reporters as of tuesday evening goes on to say while even though we're moving on now to a recovery mission we're still fully committed to making sure that we're going to use every single asset now to bring a sense of closure to the families uh this added by the governor um and i want to make an additional point here because I pick up bits and pieces of news through various sources before deciding where I want to, deciding the vantage point from which I will share this content with you. Um, and as you know, sometimes it's from the Black Information Network's website, uh, and sometimes it's from other sources that I feel are a little bit more appropriate. Um, as a result of that, I follow a lot of social media accounts that share bits and pieces of information that I think will either enhance certain stories. Of, of course, I uh, follow reputable sources um, and sources that, that may or may not be reputable. I do my best to verify the content before I share it with you. Well, one person that I follow, I'm a big fan of is DL Hughley. Um, and uh, he had a post uh, talking about the mayor of Baltimore, who also had to respond to this catastrophe. Uh, the mayor's name is Brandon M. Scott, someone that I'm familiar with. Um, it's just a young black man who's the mayor of Baltimore. What's not to love there? Um, well, I happen to know that he officially declared a state of emergency on Tuesday and uh, also Tuesday night invited the community to a prayer vigil after the conclusion of the uh, search and rescue operations and the commencement of the recovery operations. Well, on D.L. Hughley's page, he was sharing some content from some conservative pundits. And um, I remember seeing at least one 
Republican pundit referring to Brandon M. Scott as the DEI mayor or a DEI mayor. And not only is that a cheap shot, it is inaccurate. And I think that it speaks to a lot of the prejudice that people are pretending is not there um, on both sides of the aisle. And I don't think that that's fair. I think that we need to acknowledge where we are as a country. We need to acknowledge these cheap shots. This wasn't a mass shooting with thoughts and prayers. This was a person attacking a mayor simply by referring to him as the DEI mayor. Responding as he should to a catastrophe, a tragedy that happened in his city it wasn't his fault. And we might not ever determine whose fault it was. A, a ship collapsed. Uh, crashed into a bridge, but I, I, far be it for me to pick out solitary incidents and make a big deal out of it and paint with broad strokes based on that. But I've seen this sort of thing, um, quite a bit in recent months, especially with people, um, talking about black folks being affirmative action hires. Um, you know, in other words, somehow suggesting that black people are not qualified to do the things that they are doing. And obviously when you're a mayor, uh, the people elect you and it doesn't, your qualifications don't really matter. If the people like you, then they'll elect you. We saw Donald Trump make it to the office. So, um, but again, it just shows kind of how, how far some folks will go to attack the, political opponents that they see or people that they feel should not be in a position of power or black people. And again, this is not an isolated incident. It's just the incident that came up today that really stuck with me. And I, I, I feel like we're going to talk a little bit more about this because our next story comes from the Associated Press. Members of the Utah women's basketball team were subjected to racism near their hotel in Idaho last week when a pickup truck with a Confederate flag drove near them and the driver began using offensive language, including the N-word, authorities said Tuesday. The team was left shaken and wound up moving to a different hotel the next day. Utah coach Lynn Roberts said her team experienced a series of hate crimes after arriving at its first NCAA tournament hotel in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. She revealed what happened after Utah lost to Gonzaga in the second round of the tournament Monday night, and authorities confirmed some of the details the following day. Roberts said the incidents happened last Thursday night after the team arrived, and they were disturbing to the traveling party to the point where there were concerns about safety. Utah and other teams played their games in Spokane, but the Utes were staying about 30 miles away in Coeur d'Alene before they were relocated to a different hotel Friday. Quote, we had several instances of some kind of racial hate crimes toward our program and it was incredibly upsetting for all of us, unquote. Uh, she go, uh, Roberts goes on to say, uh, quote, in our world, in athletics and in a university setting, it's shocking. There's so much diversity on a college campus, so you're just not exposed to it very often, it being racism. Um, Tony Stewart, an official with the Kuntanai County Task Force on Human Relations said at a news conference, the Utes were walking from the hotel to a restaurant when the truck drove up and the driver began using racist language. After the team left the restaurant, the same driver returned, reinforced by others, and they revved their engines and again yelled at the players, quote, we all just were in shock and we looked at each other like, did we just hear that? Everyone was in shock. Our cheerleaders, our students that were in that area heard it clearly and were just frozen. Uh, this is from Utah's Deputy Athletic Director, Shamel Green, who is Black, uh, and this was told to KSL.com. Okay, so Idaho. Confederate flag up in Idaho. Now, I'm not sure if you can picture Idaho on the map. Um, I certainly can because I've been there. Um, but it's about as far from the South as you're going to get. And I've, I've been to the South. So unless you're in Washington state, 
again, or Alaska or Hawaii, <laughs> you're about as far away from the South as you're going to get. And, you know, the, I've been to all these places. I've been to all 50 states. And um, it's interesting how far that racist symbol will travel. And indeed, the racist thinking and, in fact, as we're seeing racist behavior. Um, just when I felt like we were rounding a corner when we elected our first black president, um, Donald Trump stoked the flames of white supremacy and empowered a group of people to attack all things black and pro-black, you know, that they felt was going to erode their sense of superiority, their advantages, you, you name it. Um, and a lot of people say that, you know, everyone should be equal, but you know, when you've had hundreds of years worth of a head start, and then you try to play the game equal, it's not equal, as you know. Head starts, by definition, are not equal. And this reeks of an incident that I remember in my first years in radio. So this might have been 2005-ish. A uh, guy named Don Imus, old radio guy referred to some basketball players, some, some female basketball players who were black as nappy-headed hoes. And I remember having a conversation with my program director at the time who felt like, you know, advertisers should stop advertising on his show and the free market should decide what happens to this man. Um, and I had a conversation with him saying, you know, the free market likely represents the interest of the people with the money. And the people with the money are often white men. And so for something like this, I would suggest that him being fired is the right thing morally. Throwing your hands up and saying that the free market should decide is, in my estimation, an act of cowardice. I wasn't saying this to my PD, of course, but uh, I was saying that whoever was responsible for that decision, if they did not make it the way that I felt it should be made, then that would be an act of cowardice. And, you know, here we are almost 20 years later. And rather than that getting snuffed out, that energy getting snuffed out during and after the Obama administration, I believe that it's been stoked on the heels of Donald Trump's uh, election. And indeed there's some excitement by his base to reelect him. And so a bus full of black women pulling up to a hotel in Idaho, getting confronted by a Southern flag. I think that goes to show how far we have regressed <laughs> and how much ground we need to, to make up. So between that story and, of course, as I mentioned, the quote unquote DEI mayor story, um, you know, food for thought. Let's keep it in mind. And for those that can find a way to do so morally, I'm going to ask you as often as I can to vote where you can for who you can, for who you feel comfortable voting for. And let's put a stop to all this. All right. Don't forget, these and other stories can be found at BINews.com. Um, and uh, hit me up if you want to talk about anything else, all right? Peace. This has been a production of the Black Information Network. Today's show was produced by Chris Thompson. Have some thoughts you'd like to share? Use the red microphone talkback feature on the iHeartRadio app. While you're there, be sure to hit subscribe and download all of our episodes. I am your host, Ramses Ja, on all social media. And join us tomorrow as we share our news with our voice from our perspective right here on the Black Information Network Daily Podcast.